So we've been talking about the control of gene expression at different levels, and lac operon is a specific example that you need to know that um, is a transcriptional level control prokaryotes. An operon is a group of genes controlled by the same regulatory mechanism and expressed at the same time. And the LAC stands for lactose, because prokaryotes normally would use glucose in respiration to release energy, etc. However, if there is a lack of glucose in that particular environment, the prokaryotes can then activate LAC operon to break down lactose instead. And before we actually say how it works, you need to know what are the different components involved. So some of the words here that you need to know uh, can be used not only in lac operon descriptions, but also in any other sort of situations where you need to say there are gene interactions. So first of all, we'll have a look at the structural genes. Now the structural genes are genes that code for proteins not involved in DNA regulation. So meaning there are proteins or enzymes that does all the other biochemical stuff. Now in the lac operon, there are three structural genes, lac Z, lac Y, and lac A. And they will make beta galatoxidase, lactose permease, and lactose transacetylase. And these are the three enzymes that will then go on to metabolize lactose. Apart from structural genes, we also have regulatory genes. And in the case of lac operon, this is lac I. And in comparison to the structural genes, they are the genes that will code for proteins that are involved in DNA regulation. So in the case of lac operon, the lac I gene will then code for uh, the repressor protein. And as the name implies, the repressor protein will uh, repress or stop the tr uh, transcription of these three structural genes to make these enzymes there. Then we've got two more other sections within the lac operon that you need to be aware of. And the first one is called operator, and the other one is called the promoter. And the operator is a DNA sequence that is right next to the promoter, and it's the site on the lac operon where the repressor protein ends. Whereas for the promoter, which is right next to the operator, uh, it is also the DNA sequence, but this is where the RNA polymerase will bind. So basically, the binding of these two particular proteins will uh, change or affect if the uh, transcription can actually happen. And that is the overview of the different players in the lac operon. And now we'll go on to have a look at actually how they interact to uh, make things work. Now if we draw the lac operon, this is what it looks like. So we got the uh, lac I gene, which codes for the repressor protein, and then we've got the operator, uh, the promoter, and the three structural genes there. So let's say in a normal situation we get glucose uh, for the prokaryotes to actually uh, metabolize respiration for energy. And the lac I gene there is going to code for the repressor protein. And when the repressor protein is expressed, it will then bind to the operator, like that. It's quite big, so it will block the binding site of RNA polymerase to the promoter. So in that sense, the RNA polymerase there cannot bind to the promoter to start the transcription process. And that is our normal situation when we've got lots of glucose in. So let's say if there is no more glucose, and then the E. coli or the prokaryote will have to metabolize lactose instead. So the lactose will then go up to the repressor, binds to it, and this binding is going to change the conformational shape of the repressor protein and turn it into something like this. So as you can see, uh, the repressor protein can no longer bind to the operator because of this shape change, and therefore it will then move away, revealing the binding site of promoter, and therefore the RNA polymerase can bind to it, and that will allow transcription to happen. But apart from the fact that RNA polymerase can now bind, uh, we can also find ways to make it work even more efficiently. So CAMP receptor protein. First of all, it needs to be some well, sort of, think of it as activated by CAMP by the, through the binding of it. And the, this complex will then move to bind the RNA polymerase there. And this regulates the transcription of the structural genes. So then, therefore, this whole bit complex here will then move across to inscribe uh, these genes. So when it gets to the lac Z gene, it's going to make beta-galatoxidase, and it moves further along, and then it will make lactose permease. Then it can again move along to lac C, and it makes lactose transacetylase. These three enzymes will then go on metabolize lactose and use it in respiration to release energy. So let's say after a while, uh, glucose is once more becoming available 
and because prokaryotes prefer glucose more than lactose, and therefore the lactose is going to release the repressor protein and change its shape once more, because and therefore the repressor protein can then bind to the operator again. At the same time, the presence of glucose also decreases the concentration of CAMP allowed within the environment or within the cell. So that is going to be removed from the CRP. And because of that, CRP sort of loses its function because it can only work if CAMP binds to it. So that goes out of the picture once more. And the RNA polymerase can then no longer work properly because of the lack of upregulation. So even if it does work, it's going to work very slowly. But even in that point, it can't actually start the transcription process at all because repressor protein is now bound to operator blocking its access to the promoter. So we kind of go back to the very beginning and then the cell would just use glucose as a substrate for respiration. So in summary, we say that normally when there is glucose, lac I is expressed to make the repressor protein. And then the repressor protein will then bind to the operator which blocks the promoter. Therefore that prevents the RNA polymerase from binding to the promoter for the transcription of the control genes. Then if you don't have any more glucose, and but there's lactose present, then the lactose will bind to the repressor protein causing a conformational change. And therefore the repressor protein can no longer bind to the operator. And it's released from the operator revealing the promoter, then the RNA polymerase can bind to the promoter to start the transcription of LAC-Z, LAC-Y, and LAC-A genes. And there is a CAMP receptor protein called CRP, and it forms a complex with CAMP, or cyclic AMP, which upregulates the RNA polymerase action, which makes the transcription of these structural genes much quicker and much more efficient. However, if there is glucose present again, the cell prefers glucose over lactose. Glucose will downregulate the concentration of CAMP within the cell, therefore downregulates the RNA polymerase upregulation, and therefore stops the lac operon structural genes from being expressed. At the same time, lactose will then be released from the repressor protein, uh, and the repressor protein can once more bind to the operator, preventing RNA polymerase being bound to the promoter to start transcription again. And that is the summary of the lac operon.